All right. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Matthew. Uh, I'm happy to share our great open collaboration thanks to Grant, Bickland, and Reddy. So what's this? In each layer of full system stack, including Uber's application and usage, Jack Rabbit Labs cloud orchestration software, and SK Hynix CXL-based memory solution, considering Intel's recent CPU architecture. All of our members play a critical role to prove the feasibility and value in their professional sectors. So, you know, here at OCP is the right place that we bring technologies into a real system. Today, we are introducing about composable memory architecture with the Kubernetes fabric attached memory orchestration. Today's agenda promises an exciting blend of uh, groundbreaking solution and insightful messages regarding composable memory systems, especially focusing on multi-host based CXL memory solution. Based on the OTP CMS logical and physical architecture, we would implement a feasible hardware and software solution for memory pooling uh, through this collaboration and showing now. Uh, open source software based composable memory systems environment uh, defini definitely faves the way for straightforward and simple to use and efficient uh, data movement of CXL fabrics. Through so this type of infrastructure by leveraging CXL 2.0 and 3.x beyond the CXL 1.1, memory pooling by which stranded memories are mitigated is practical that multi-host can dynamically allocate and deallocate their CXL memory portions according to each node's memory usage by means of CXL spec feature-like dynamic capacity device. Uh, actually, this work is already done in the OCP CMS work stream, and also uh, this is captured from the OCP CMS white papers. You know, CXL is a well-recognized interconnect for composable memory architecture with current and future expected usages. Um, in a higher level, host with formal operating system and virtual machine manager, that is essentially consuming local DRAM and remote CXL direct attached and multi-headed memory. Last but not least, Data center mem uh, memory fabric manager that st stitches all of these pieces together and works with the orchestrator to provisioning and deprovisioning the memory. Uh, you can take a look into more about the uh, logical architecture in the OCP CMS white papers. Uh, CXL 2.0 provides that uh, device memory can be allocated to multiple hosts through CXL switch. For better connectivity, CXL 3.x provides that pe uh, direct peer-to-peer -peer device memory access through uh, multi-level CXL switches. And it can remove a bottleneck that we don't have to go through the host anymore. Uh, other thing is data center memory fabric manager, uh, also known as a CMS platform orchestrator, focuses on supporting existing data center scale research scheduler via familiar fabric manager APIs and CCI for handling of composable memory operations. Well, what is, the, what, is the, what is the idea of this collaboration? And what is the impact of this collaboration? We, for getting the answer, we can think about the reasoning via six principles like 5W1H. On the Uber data center usage, you know, stranded memory is a real pain point in Kubernetes uh, environment. So as a um, one solution to solve this pain point, we built up the composable memory systems with SK Hynix FPJ based real CXL pooled memory prototype and Jack Rabbit Labs cloud orchestra orchestration software for memory pooling on the Uber's data center usage. Uh, this is a high level system diagram composed of uh, multi-host servers as Kubernetes workers, orchestration server as a Kubernetes master, and CXL pooled memory solution. We have been dubbed SK Hynix CXL pooled memory prototype as Niagara. 
Niagara can connect to maximum a host and can support to maximum one terabyte capacity using four channels. Uh, to support the CXS pack compatible DCD functionality, Niagara consists of two parts such as a pooled memory manager and pooled memory controller. According to the separate, uh, separated orchestrate request, uh, pooled memory manager of Niagara can send the DCD commands to pooled memory controller, and then pooled memory controller plays an important role in supporting DCD functionality to allocate and deallocate memory blocks. While we use FPGA-based CXA pooled memory prototype to support the DCD functionality, uh, we would implement the software stacks interface for host, uh, CMS platform orchestrator, and pooled memory manager and controller. I will hand it over the uh, I will hand it over to Grant, who will talk about the mapping of this architecture to Kubernetes with cloud orchestration software and uh, FPGA-based CXA pooled memory prototype. It's your turn, Grant. Yeah, so um, thank you. And I want to thank Uber for their help with um, talking about how Kubernetes would like to you know, interface with a composable memory architecture, like what's a good way to expose this type of platform. And then SK Hynix for providing the open innovation lab and the access to the Niagara and stuff like that so we can show a real functional demo of how these technologies can be useful for application end users. the wrong way. So uh, Vikram made a comment about how his exposure here is proportional to the number of years he does things. Uh, last year, he had a presentation here in this forum and he said, wouldn't this be cool if Kubernetes could talk to DCF <coughs> DCMFM and schedule pods on CMS without having to worry about how the underlying memory technology works? And so we did that. Um, nice. So, this is our uh, this in the <coughs> this is in the innovation village now. We've been running it since Tuesday. Uh, it's essentially it's bone stock Kubernetes, vanilla Kubernetes, running on a vanilla Linux kernel, running workloads on CXL expander. <laughs> Thanks. So no off the shelf modifications. The Niagara does have DCD functionality and. There's some special kernel bits with that to get that functional because the hardware is not available. But the demo itself is stock. There's, we're not using those, we can use those mechanisms. There's no reason why we can't use those mechanisms, but we are using just standard <coughs> Linux kernel stuff. Um, if it's 6.3 or newer, you're good to go, right? Um, the implementation bits are pretty straightforward. So we have a few things running on the hosts themselves. We have a couple of orchestrator daemons that just manage the memory that's visible to the hosts. There's a, a control point for those daemons running on the different worker nodes. But then the rest of it is just deployed into Kubernetes. So there's a monitor pod that has a Kubernetes lifecycle. It's robust, blah, 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 it restarts. And it serves as the inner point between the daemons running on the bare metal hardware and the Kubernetes scheduler itself. And then your applications, your pods run unmodified, right? Init pods are a very familiar thing with Kubernetes. You just, it's the setup that you need to do for your container applications to run. And so you just add a few things that say, hey, I need remote memory, I need CMA memory. And then it just schedules it. It doesn't know how it's being scheduled, it doesn't care because it shouldn't have to, right? You provide a couple of YAML files, everything's good to go. Like I said, come check it out, it's live. Bring a workload, we'll run it, it's awesome. Um, this is like the larger overview. So this is the setup that we're running right now. We've got two Emerald Rapids platforms and the Niagara system running. Um, they're both connected through a Gen 4 link by eight. Uh, the cluster orchestration mechanism is Kubernetes, right? And then our bits that are running in between the application and the MR and then that's pretty much it. So we've kind of covered this, right? Uh, I was going to subject you to a video and then I decided I would subject you to this instead. Um, we'll run through this, it's a lot. But essentially, 
you deploy a familiar looking YAML file. And what this does is it pulls our orchestrator, oh, sorry, thanks. It pulls the orchestrator off the container, loads it in, creates a namespace in Kubernetes. You add a little bit to your pod deployment for the init to ask for the claim. And then the highlighted bit in the top, you'll see it's sitting at zero, zero memory for the NUMA node. You cube apply like you would always. Memory shows up, right? You can check the status of the pods. Everything's running, everything's deployed. And you just have memory on your server now. Easy peasy. Everyone who's used Kubernetes can do this. Um, and then, you know, you can check the status of all your claims from the bare metal side, from the orchestrator, to make sure that everything's connected, everything's running, everything's happy. You can see that the orchestrator understands the pods and the life cycle of the pods, so it can garbage collect these memory resources when the pods exit or get terminated. Um, last thing for this is that we did run, like, actual workloads on it, not just some test stuff. Um, like I said, it's a Gen 4 by 8 interface to DDR4 memory. And we ran two benchmarks that Uber found interesting for this work, with uh, a Go bench from Cloudflare and then a Java benchmark, which is a higher bandwidth transactional processing workload, kind of mimics an e-commerce store, right? Um, Go bench ran parity. So we ran Go bench on the DDR5 memory, and then we ran Go bench pinned to the Niagara. And because the Go kernel is so small, it was basically cached in running in the CPU. And even on the Niagara, the, all the GoBench benchmarks, like the compression, the decompression, the regex stuff, the HTML string parsing, ran pretty much the same. And then the Java benchmark, it was constrained by the interface, but you, know, you can do simple spherical Cal math and say that if it wasn't constrained by the interface, remote memory would have been suitable for these workloads. So we're pretty happy with where we are on this. Oh, that's the wrong button. But yeah, so come check us out. And All right. Um, so I, as Grant and Matthew mentioned, we started this last year. Uh, we basically said, Let's put together a solution that essentially um, works in Kubernetes. Uh, we didn't have many moving parts. Um, we didn't have uh, CXO, buffer, and working software stack, um, and silicon being ready, the server being ready, server, uh, memory buffer, working software being ready. Here we are with deep collaboration among four different companies plus lots of others in OCP. Kind of highlights you know, the open and the innovation that can actually bring us together. Um, so we have a working Kubernetes end-to-end -end solution that not only does the control plane, but also does the data plane. And you are able to actually launch the workloads. Um, and this whole thing is very transparent. As far as the Kubernetes is concerned, it is completely transparent. That's what we aim to. Um, so our goal is to essentially build upon this success to drive more and more memory pooling, um, you know, the use cases. And we also want to focus on high availability as well on top. Let's skip the next slide. Um, so um, I strongly urge you guys to actually participate in the uh, development of uh, what the team has done already uh, within the context of Kubernetes contributions to the Kubernetes community, as well as building the orchestration, memory orchestration layer, um, and specs, white paper, implementation proof points, collaterals, and everything, er in everything that you can think of, all the way from development to production implementation, we strongly request you guys to join. Thank you. <laughs>